Yo, peace was good. <clears throat> Welcome to another hip hop I'm review. This is part um two seventy. I know it's been a minute since I did one of these. Um, I think the last time review that I did was um uh, Sheik Looch with his debut album Walk with Me. Uh, that was released in two thousand three. Check that out when you guys get a chance. Uh, the album review that I'll be redo I'll be doing today is uh. Intoxicated Demons by the Deep by the Beat Nuts, the EP, uh, released in nineteen ninety three. Um, for those who don't know who the Beat Nuts are, they consist of three members: uh, uh, Psycho Les, who's um, who's of Colombian descent, is from Astoria, not Jackson Heights, like they put it on um, you know, Wikipedia. Um, Juju, uh, I believe is from Corona, and then um, Al um, Al Tariq, aka Fashion, is also from um. Is from uh, Corona, all right. So, uh, originally they were called the Beat Kings. Uh, they met each other, I think, like in high school, whatever the case may be. Both uh, Juju and Psycho Les made beats, you know, they were, pro they were producers, they were DJs, and that kind of thing. So, they came to a liking to each other. So, um, they would like you know play loops and stuff like that, and at parties and things like that, like go make beats and things like that. But they didn't have anybody to to write to rhyme to those to to their beats, so I think at the you know in the beginning they began to, you know sort of writing their own rhymes and stuff like that. But then they there was like they were more focused on the production side of things. They needed to find an MC to rap over their beats, and that's where um, fashion came to play. So um, both members had um, they had a um, they had a mutual friend. That was a cousin of Al Tariq, aka Fashion, and yo, he was like, yo, I know this guy, he's my cousin, you know, that kind of thing, um, you know, I'll, you know, I'll go introduce you guys to that, and then ever since, you know, they did, that's how they came about, and that's how they became a group, um, so with that being said, um, <clears throat> they got put on by, uh, you know, um, African BAM of the, uh, they got discovered by African BAM of... Um, the Jungle Brothers, and that's how they became like the part of the whole Native Tongues and that kind of thing. And then so when they met, when they met them, they were like, "Yo, who um, yo, what's your name?" He they called themselves at the time they called themselves the Beat Kings. Um, and the Beat Kings, like you know, you kind of like making fun of it, like, "Man, y'all nuts, y'all y'all crazy," you know. And um, so later on, I believe uh, Jungle Brothers they were um, on a radio station with um, DJ Red Alert, because you know, guys know they all you know coincide with each other in the whole Zulu Nation uh, connection. So with that being said, um, I think uh, African Bam was, um, they was giving shout outs, and the, yo, shout out to the Beat Nuts, and that's how they came with the name, was because of Mike, uh, of uh, African Bam, is because he said, yo, shout out to the Beat Nuts. And to honestly, I think that was a better, um, look for them, you know, because the Beat Kings is like kind of like generic and that kind of thing. And keep in mind, you had, you know, the likes of 45 King, may he rest in peace. You had King T, you know, people like that. So I think the Beat Nuts was like very original and it just kind of sticks to it, like stands out. So it was like a blessing in disguise, if you will. And then so uh, fast forward, um, I believe, I believe, um, African Bam um, was the one that also discovered Chi Ali. And so with that being said, because, um, you know, at that time in the early 90s, you know, the big thing, like, the kind of like the, uh, the gimmick was to have, um, you know, child rappers to rap and things like that. You know, you had the likes of, like, uh, Criss Cross, uh, Illegal, The Youngsters, Another Bad Creation. Even though Another Bad Creation was, like, more R&B. But, you know, you, know, you guys know what I'm trying to say. And um, so... With that being said, um, Chi Ali, like I said, was um, was supposed to work with African with the Jungle Brothers, but at the time I think they were working on the album uh, JB's with the Remedy. I think that's the name of the album that came out in '93. Um, but African Band was like, "Yo, um, I don't have time to work with him because we're working on this album." So he gave him the alley oop to the Beat Nuts, and um, you know, and they ended up you know uh, ghost writing a lot of his lyrics like. The majority of the lyrics, I think Fashion did the majority of the writing. Um, Dove um, or Dave of of De La Soul also read, wrote, ghost wrote a couple of stuff. I think he wrote um, Funky Lemon. He did um, Funky Lemonade because um, 
there's a reference track if you if you find on um YouTube. I'll post it in the description box. Um that um you know that he actually did the vocals and things like that he did his own version like it's really rough but it sounds really good i really, really enjoyed it you know um so you know they pretty much go through everything wrote all the lyrics and things like that they did they did the beats and that kind of thing for the chia lee album and that was like their demo you know and that was like their form of a demo and you know chris lighty of our uh, relativity records um, may he rest peace as well. Big loss for hip hop. Um, he wanted to find out yo, who did the beats and who wrote for Chi Ali, and they found out it was the Beat Nuts, and that's how they were able to get their deal um, for relatively violent records and that kind of thing. And that's how this album, you know, pretty much came about and that kind of thing. Um, and I'll keep saying album and EP, but I'll explain why. Um, I'll explain why in the, towards the end of the video why I, I keep going with that. But yeah, so getting back to this, um, that's how they were get, able to get the deal of uh, Relativity Records. And, and, and that's how this uh, project has come about, all right? So there you have it. So the Chi Ali album was pretty much the, the demos for the Beat Nuts and that kind of thing. Um, and you know, that's how they got signed and that kind of thing, all right? So like I said, the Beat Nuts consisted of three members, Psycho Lash, Juju, and Fashion, all right? Uh, there are two singles of the album. The singles are uh, No Equal and Rain of the Tech. Those are the singles of the album, all right? Now I get down, I'm going to show you what the album looks like. So as you can see here, uh, pretty simple. Um, they actually got the cover. Um, it was kind of influenced by uh, Heck Mobley. Um, with the album Turnaround, I think that came out again, 63 or 62 or 64. Um, they got that from that, that kind of thing. I think the symbol is from that too as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and even the look, it has like that blue note kind of look to it. Pretty cool. Um, that's what it looks like. Let's open the CD. All right. All right. And I'll post an interview with Psycho Les where he actually talks all this stuff. So all the stuff that I'm telling you guys about, I got it from that interview as well. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that as well. Uh, you got the credits right here, you know, the production credits, that kind of thing. The track listing, the shout out. So nothing too crazy. Um, you see uh, Juju right here. You see uh, Fashion. You see Psycho Les. So those are the members of the group, all right? All right, you know how I get down. I'm gonna go through the meat and potatoes. Um, the only feature in the album is um, is uh, VIC, the Mighty VIC, who is also part of the Beat Nuts, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, eventually um, he had his own thing with the Groove Merchants. He did uh, the Hydra Beat series back in the late '90s and that kind of thing. So very underrated producer as well. But um, let's get into the album. All right, the first track is World Famous Intro. This is an intro with a um, with a beat with an instrumental. It's the same world famous. It has like a vocal sample saying world famous on loop and that kind of thing. So nothing too crazy. All right, then we got track two, world famous, um, dope track that features uh the uh, VIC, uh Vic, um very dope track. Dope, dope way to start the album, in my personal opinion. Um yeah, it's dope beat. It has a nice horns, nice drums and that kind of thing. Um, I like the line by Psycho Lush when he says, I stick to being rough and rugged, anti-pop. I guess I'll stay broke. Fuck it. A crazy Hispanic. Psycho Lux panic. Nah, not me. I just pulled the automatic out the knapsack and, co and cold pointed. Block you and leave your punk ass disjointed. Fucking dope. I love that. So that's track, uh, Tooled World Famous. Uh, track three, Engineer Talking Shit. Is this self-explanatory? Is this... Um, two engineers just talking shit about the beat notes, saying like, oh, they always come late, they always come drunk, they always partying, we never get stuff done, and that's, that's always been, um, there's, there's always been stories about that, like, you know, when they're making the albums, it's always like a big party, like, they would just, like, just drink, smoke, and, you know, do all crazy shit and stuff like that, so, kind of like, um, you know, plays into part in their, in their music and stuff like that, um, so that was track three, engineers t talking shit. Uh, track four, Psycho Dwarf. Um, dope track. It's kind of like a party track. Definitely one of the more signature track, Beat Nuts signature tracks. When you think of the Beat Nuts, you know, Psycho Dwarf is definitely one of those songs. 
um, that people think, at least the core Beat Nuts fans, you know, like these mainstream motherfuckers that they only think like, um, you know, watch out now and, you know, shit like that. So, um, yeah, but get into the track, Psycho Dwarf, very dope. Um, that easy could have been a single, especially at that time period, definitely would have been a dope video. Yeah, I could definitely see that being like, um, like, kind of like, um, the movie Juice, the scene where, you know, um, Bishop and, um, Q was like, you know, this, like, you know, they're chasing, the well, Q, um, Bishop's chasing Q, and then you see them in, like, an apartment, I can see, like, a video like that for that, like, you know, them, like, in an apartment, you know, just that kind of thing, just some straight New York shit, you know what I'm saying, so, um, that's the vibes I get, that I could picture that being a video, but, um, I like the line by Psycho Lush when he said, I'm back, reincarnated, Psycho Lush running through the graveyard, intoxicated, ducking, dugging, titty hugging, graph up mugging, keep you where your worst nightmare snuck in, yeah, you think I'm bugging here, my Glock 10, you fucking dope, dope shit, so that was track four, um, Psycho Dwarf, right? uh, track five on the one plus two, um, Nothing too crazy. This is a drum loop on repeat with um with a vocal sample, so nothing too crazy. So that was uh track five um one on the f one plus two, uh track six no equal. One of my favorite tracks of the album. That is actually a single. I believe that was the second and final single of the album. It is a very controversial track. Reason being is because um there was a line that Juju have um kind of took shots at Dots Effects. And possibly a uh, tongue twister, all right. Um, and I, I wrote the line that he said, um, where he says, <clears throat> where he said he said, um, now now punk niggas want to test me, but all that diggity diggity tongue twisting shit don't impress me. It's just a phase, you know them well that you'll fall off in a minute because that shit won't sell. Don't sell. Funny how you think you could surpass me out, but outlast me. But with that bullshit style, you fall fast. You. I see. I suggest you go back where you came from. You're my my mic. Come on, don't play, son. So yeah, that right there, you know, obviously, obviously, is a shot towards um that's effects, but um it it was also a possible um track um this to tongue twister because um at the time um tongue um twister was known as tongue twister. He had an album out that came out the, the year prior in '92 called um Running Off the Mouth, uh, which I need to get my hands on, but it's kind of hard to find. Um, it's a pretty dope track. It has like, like, you know, uh, like, you know, jazzy beats and that kind of thing. So kind of like a different, you know, sound from Twister, the, you know, this is before the speed mobility cats and stuff like that in the late nineties. So, um, there was also another line that I like from, uh, fast when he says the chicks I stick shit with, I love your figures, triggers. I pull with no remorse for bodies. Um, fast, fast pump the hot, um, Hotties, chump pump with shotties. Shoot them up, bang, bang, miss targets rarely. Mics I touch, I mics, mics I touch up, I fuck them daily. Fucking dope. I've always liked that line. I thought that was a pretty dope uh, line right there. All right. So that was uh, track six, uh, No Equal. Uh, and before I get into that, um, actually, Twister, he actually made a song called Suicide. And, um, which he takes shots at Naughty by Nature, and he also takes shots at the Beat Nuts, and I'ma tell you, he killed both of them. Like, they were, there was no coming back from that. I'll post that down in the description box. Um, in the third verse, he killed the Beat Nuts. Like, you know, no disrespect, but it's what it is. There's no coming back to that, you know what I mean? So, uh, so that was track six, no equal. Track seven, Reign of the Tech. Definitely one of my favorite, um, songs of the album. That was the first single of the album. Really enjoyed that. That was fucking dope. I love the um chorus by um you know Sadat X. Fucking dope shit. Um, I like the line by Juju when he says, "Now I'm on a rampage. Prepare for the slaughter. Lyrical monster bursting, bursting nuts in your daughter. Love that." Um, another line when he says, "Bulletproof, ready for action. No frowning. Fully loaded tech jump, ready to go hunting. Fucking dope shit right there. I love that shit right there." So that was track uh, seven, Rain of the Tech, dope shit. Uh, track eight, uh, quality, quality and the Bushmen off the top. Um, that was just a freestyle um, with, um, I believe it was Fashion that did the, um, 
that was um free song over that beat. Um, it was like one verse, you know, over a jazzy, like a kind of like a very spot, like kind of like stripped down or uh, jazzy beat. You know, nothing too crazy. Um, uh, it was it was okay. You know, it's not something I really go to. Um, track nine, third of the trio, another dope track. That was actually a fashion solo um solo track. Really enjoyed that right there. Um, I like the line when he said. Copy the cat, copy the cat that started the fat track. Did he drop dreads from the head now through the jack? Sex appealing and what is what's in what I'm feeling. You can feel at the alarm, but no woman. I'm I'm studying. Fucking dope, dope shit right there. Um, yeah, third of the trio. Uh, track nine. Uh, that was like I said, it was a fashion solo track. Um, track ten. Um. It was nothing to it. Um, it was just, um, you know, just a girl leaving a voicemail, that kind of thing. Talked about all oh, that miss you, that kind of thing. Um, and track eleven story. Um, uh, it's a sex track. Um, to me, they're like the weakest song of the album, in my opinion, or the project, whatever the case may be. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, very short review. Um. Yeah, so, because like, there's, realistically, there's only, like, seven songs and four skits. Um, so, the reason why I keep calling it an album is because, originally, this was supposed to be a full-length album. But, at the time, Fashion got into some street shit. He got into some, like, legal troubles, and he went to jail. So, that's why he's not really on a lot of the songs, you know. It was just, just it was mostly, um, you know, Psycho Less and Juju doing their thing. Uh, fashion wasn't really on a lot of the songs, so that's why that um, that's why the album was short too. Uh, kind of the same case with um, uh, Big Noise with episodes of a Hustler. The reason why it wasn't a form of album was because um, he was he got into some legal issues and that kind of thing, and um, it was supposed to be a full length album, but um, you know he needed the money to pay for his lawyer fees and stuff like that. And you know from what I've heard, that Havoc wasn't too happy. With him putting the album like that, but you know he needed the money to you know to you know pay off his lawyers and that kind of thing. So pretty much the same concept with that, like you know, fashion was in jail and that kind of thing. So they couldn't even finish the album. Um, so they just you know whatever you got is like pretty much what you got. Also, for all my vinyl heads, um, I'm pretty sure you could find it on YouTube. But um, I think uh, was it Chopped Herring or One Leg Up? Uh, they put out an EP called Intoxicated Demos, and pretty much the songs that were left off the album, that kind of thing, that didn't make the album and things like that. Um, there was a song called Sitting on My Room. Uh, Fashion did a freestyle to over that because again, that was so that was the Beat Nuts demo. So she, had, there was a song called Sitting in My Room by Chia Lee, but Fashion did a solo track off that out of that song. So that's on there as well. So. Um, I'll post that down in the description box so you guys can check it out. But um, overall, uh, dope project. Um, it's pretty dope. Um, it is short, but it's short and sweet. That kind of thing. Um, this this EP is a little hard to find, and it goes for a little bit of money. Before you be able to find it for like dirt cheap, but you know, with everything with inflation, these inflated prices, um, it has gone up in price. I've seen it go for like you know maybe like you know fifteen dollars and up. So. But it's not in nothing too crazy. But um, if you can get it, get definitely get your hands on it. Um, yeah, Toscated Demons EP by the Beat Nuts. Uh, this was released in uh, 1993. Definitely stay tuned for more. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Definitely stay tuned for more. All right.